The purpose of soft proofing is to see what your project is going to look like when output, which is usually printing, and then to figure out how to fix it if it doesn't look the way that you want to. The next step in our color management process is to make changes in Photoshop until the image looks the way that you like it. Here on this slide, the image on the top left should be bright and vibrant, but when I choose the correct printer profile by soft proofing, it is changed to be dull and washed out, which you can see on the bottom image. That doesn't necessarily mean that I can't get it to print bright and vibrant, it just means that my original colors will print dull and washed out using this printer profile if I do nothing else. So we can use any Photoshop skills learned in this semester to adjust the image until it meets the needs, until it looks the way you want it to. So uh, a few go-to options to try when the image is dull and washed out um, could be the levels or curves adjustment layers, the vibrance adjustment layer, um, a duplicate layer, and using a blending mode like overlay to brighten the image, um, and then lower the opacity so the change isn't too intense and also brightness and contrast adjustment layers. Um, so here, we made a few changes um, to improve the image for output. And um, I mean, here, there, it, and there's no set way. I would just recommend that you choose whatever way works for you. Try a couple different ones. On this slide, you've got, we've got um, the top one is a levels adjustment, and the bottom is vibrance. Yeah, it's going to depend on your image. And so when you look at your image and it becomes dull and washed out, you have to be able to ask yourself, what could I do to improve the different areas of the image that are now lacking? Yeah. And so in these examples, we use that level and the vibrance option. And the adjustment layers seem to be the best because they're easy to try and then undo if you don't like the way they look. Yeah. My favorite's actually the levels. Maybe I'll jump over real quick if you don't mind, okay. Whitney. Uh, my favorite's actually the levels command when you do this. And so I'm just going to double check that I still have my proof set up as the correct paper. And when you're previewing, it's washed out. And when it's not, so I want it to look more like this, right? When I look at a lot of the printer profiles, what happens to the image is, yeah, it gets duller, but a lot of times the blacks get washed out. And so if you're looking at your image and you're thinking, wow, the blacks are, are not there, the levels command works fabulously. And so with the preview on, so now I'm kind of looking at the ugly version, if you apply a levels adjustment layer, you can use the properties panel and you can slide the, the black point from the left over to the right. And what it's doing is it's saying that just a tiny bit of the image should have the darkest black, but the more you move it to the right, the more and more of the image that is in a dark shade or in a shadow will be the darkest dark. And so as I turn this on and off, you can see the difference by just moving that black slider over. Um, if it starts to muddy the picture, then I would take the neutral uh, slider in the middle, the midtones, and I would slide that back and forth until I got the image or the brightness that I'm looking for. And so now you can kind of compare the two. It's, it's a little bit of a subtle difference, but the blacks definitely look better. Much improved. Okay. And so since I went on tangent, we'll jump back to the slideshow. Exporting is the process of converting a document from one file format to another. There are two ways to save a copy of a project in an alternate file format in Photoshop. They are File Save As and File Export. File Save As is generally reserved for file formats a particular program can open itself, and File Export is usually used to create a file format a particular program can create but it can't open. Photoshop throws these rules out the window though because it can basically open any file format. What's important for you to know is that a .psd Photoshop file, like we've been using all semester, is not the appropriate file format for many of your desired outputs. It is great for editing, but when it is time to share your work, post it on the web, or print it, another file format is probably a better option. There are many exporting and save as options available in Photoshop. We'll talk about a few of the most popular options for export. Save as options in Photoshop include a huge list. So you can see here, and you probably have noticed it, um, when you've saved as um, Photoshop files, this huge drop-down list. Um, but uh, so you can read all those at your leisure. Um, the key Photoshop um, files are the .psd, the TIFF, and the EPS. Um, the Photoshop PDF, the JPEG, and PNG. These are the most common file formats available via the File Save As in Photoshop, and the uh, most common to use for export. Additional options available when you choose File Export as opposed to File Save As are the Quick Export as a PNG option, 
export as, and you can export as a PNG, a JPEG, a GIF, or a SVG file, which we don't actually talk about a lot. And save for web, which is a legacy version of a dialog box that used to be really popular, and you're able to save as a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG file. Export as and save for web allow for the most customization of your file. One thing you should know about choosing quick export as a PNG is that you don't get to make any adjustments or make decisions about your adjustments and your export. And so you can see my little note on the slide here. If you use the quick export as PNG option, you're basically just keeping your fingers crossed, hitting, giving a PNG and hoping that whatever the result is, is something that you like. And so a better option when you want to create a PNG file is to either choose the export as option or, uh, as we'll see on future slides, the legacy option that we're talking about. When you choose to export as, you can export as a PNG, a JPEG, a GIF, or an SGV file. And you can see that you have more options here. You can make decisions about the width and the height of your image. Notice, because it's a web file format, Photoshop is asking you how big you want the image to be. And it's not asking in inches, it's asking in pixels, because that's how you should describe the size of an image when you're going to put it on a display device. You can scale it larger and smaller. There's, there's a number of different things that you can choose. Um, but most importantly, you can choose the size, and you can choose the file format. When you choose the last option, so you choose file save as, or I'm sorry, file export and then save for web legacy, you get to test different options and see what is capable when you're saving for the web. And so when you choose the save for web legacy, you can save as a GIF file, a JPEG, or a PNG file, and you can see that it gives you different process options. And so right now we're looking at the 4UP version. It shows you the original file is called projectfinalcopy.psd. It's 549k in size. But if you look at the other three options, it's saying if you were to choose 100% dither, selected palette, and 256 colors, you could view this image as a GIF at 129.7K and it would take 24 seconds to load at 56.6 kilobytes per second, which is kind of funny. We say this is the legacy because it's older and we used to use it. 56.6K, I believe, is dial-up speed. Do you remember that way yes. back in the, in the day, Whitney? And so if you were on a dial-up internet, which doesn't really exist anymore, like AOL back in the day, um, it would take 24 seconds to load that image. Um, in the 4UP view, it gives you other options, and so you can see that if you limit the colors from 256 colors, which is the max for a GIF file, to 128 colors, you could then load it in 20 seconds, so you could shave 4 seconds off of the time it takes to load. Um, when you are doing this, the idea is that you could um, bridge the gap between the quality that you want and the speed in which you want it to load on your website. And so you could say, I really want it to be the prettiest picture, but I look at it and it will take 24 seconds to load. Or I could make some adjustments to limit the color or process it a different way, and then it would load faster. And so these are some of the options that you have when you are saving for web legacy. So you can change that file format on top. You can change the way that the image is processed. You can have dither or no dither. So dither is something that basically is like a feather. We learned about feathering in Art 1280. And so you need dither on GIF images because they don't do well with gradients or tonal changes. And so the dither would be how it would fade or create a gradient, which it doesn't do a good job of, but that would be your option. And then you can adjust whether or not your image has transparency and how the transparency would be processed.